welcome to worship with Napa Methodist Church. I'm David Sheffer. And I'm Nikita Rimland. And we're this morning's worship leaders. We begin a new worship series today that we pray will bring a breather and a sense of assurance to us all. Life is a series of exclamations from, oh no, to help, to oh yeah. We can swing between disappointment, helplessness, and gratitude on a daily basis. The Book of Psalms knows all about this, written over a span of time from exile and isolation to the rebuilding of the community. The poetry of the Psalms will accompany us in this series, reminding us that through it all, we can trust that God is indeed holding our lives. This worship series will allow us to simplify and slow down for a time. We will lean on prayer, reflection, and sharing with one another. I'm Mimi Sheffer, and this is the Sun Response. Please feel free to sing along with me and Graham Durfee, who will be playing the guitar. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding your life. God is God is holding your life, we believe. We do not live in a land ruled by kings, as the hearers of our first psalm in this series did. Nevertheless, the petitions of the psalmist for justice, deliverance, defense of the poor and oppressed, and peace for all peoples is an undergirding theme of our faith. We are reminded that a just society is one that proclaims these lives are precious and worthy of protection. God indeed is holding our lives. Let this be our epiphany in this new year. Lift up your eyes, behold the hills. From where will help and rescue come? We call the one who made the earth who bless the stars, the moon, and sun. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life, we believe. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding Holy and just God, you have shown us what is right and good. Open up this day to a vision of the world made right, so that we may follow your ways and know the peace of your reign on earth as it is in heaven. We praise you for your steadfast presence, holding our lives together in love. Amen. This morning, we're celebrating communion. So during the psalm, you might want to have something to eat, traditionally bread, and something to drink, traditionally juice or wine, to share this simple and sacred meal with all of us, gathered together, not in person, but in spirit. Oh, 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 oh,
series, God is Holding Your Life, features readings from the Psalms, from a new translation growing out of the work of the Order of St. Luke. The Order's focus is on sacramental and liturgical scholarship and practice, and the translation brings out the beauty of language to reveal the deeper meaning of the Psalms. Psalms are meant to be spoken aloud or chanted or sung. This particular psalm, number 72, is described as a coronation hymn. The new king is to be the human agent through whom God's justice reaches the nation. Let it be so. I will be reading selected verses from Psalm 72 from this Lucan Psalter translation. O God, give your anointed one your judgment and your justice. Teach your chosen one to govern your people rightly and bring justice to the oppressed. The mountains will bring the people peace and the little hills bring justice. Your anointed will defend the oppressed among the people. Save the children of the poor and crush the oppressor. The reign of your anointed will endure as long as the sun and moon throughout all generations. The rule of the chosen one will be like rain coming down on the meadow, like showers watering the earth. Justice will flower through the days and abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. Tarshish and the isles will offer gifts. Arabia and Sheba will bring tribute. All rulers will pay homage, and all the nations will serve your anointed. Your anointed will rescue the poor when they cry out, and the oppressed when there is no one to help them. Your chosen one will take pity on the lowly and the poor, and will save their lives. Your chosen one will rescue them from all violence and oppression, and will treat their blood as precious.
Happy New Year. I'm Pastor Mary Lee welcoming you to worship with Napa Methodist Church on this first Sunday of 2021. We have so many hopes for this new year. It feels like a fragile thing this new year, kind of like a newly laid egg. I have chickens and I've watched them roost on their eggs, protecting and keeping them warm. I don't have any male chickens, so my chickens aren't sitting on eggs that will hatch, but they don't know that. Their job is to watch, to roost, to hover and brood over their eggs. Jesus at one time referred to himself as a hen, longing to tuck Jerusalem under his wings to warm them with his downy feathers. His words were a lament because his people didn't respond in the ways he'd hoped. They didn't want a mother hen or a savior. When I gather eggs from the chicken coop, I hold them in my cupped hands. And when all the girls are laying, I sometimes need to put eggs in my apron or pants pockets. I'm careful with these edible gifts, both out of respect for the work of the hens and because their eggs are fragile. If one rolls off the roof of the coop or off a smooth tabletop, they shatter and are just a gloppy mess. Our new worship series, God is Holding Your Life, is a reminder that, like eggs, human beings are delicate and breakable, and that God holds our lives. The past 36 months of this last year, anyway, that's how long this last year has seemed to me, have tested our faith that God broods over us, that God holds and loves us. Some of us have forgotten that God is like a mother hen, not sheltering us from life's hardships, but willing to give her life for love of us. Not to belabor this metaphor, but there have been a lot of broken eggs this past year. Along with loneliness and isolation and inconveniences, there was a lot of hurt and shock and disappointment. I think many of us were taken aback at the extended look at our nation's underbelly, the incivility, cruelty, greed, and faithlessness. It seemed at times like a food fight of violence and hatred and fear, and much of our idealism and our belief in our goodness fell from the heights and shattered. In this new year, we need to reimagine the world as it should be and as God dreams for it to be when God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. In the naming and claiming of a safe and hospitable nest for all people to live, we need to see and we need to convey by how we live that God is holding our lives. God is holding all of our lives. We are precious. All lives are precious because we are made in the divine image, created to love and be loved. Today is Epiphany Sunday, another event in the Christian calendar like Advent that hasn't transferred to the cultural or retail calendars. Epiphany is a sudden, intuitive perception or insight into reality or the essential meaning of something. It's an aha experience. The church celebrates Epiphany as the day the Magi, called wise men or the three kings, followed the star that led them to the baby Jesus, where they worshipped him as the Christ, the one sent by God. This newborn king was first seen by shepherds, who were social outcasts, ritually unclean and unwelcome almost everywhere, and by the Magi, who were foreigners and heathen. This was, and it still is, an epiphany. Christ did not come for the wealthy, the satisfied, the religious, or the powerful. Christ has come for the poor, for sinners and seekers, for the disregarded and the powerless. His mother Mary sang of the epiphany given to her, realizing that she would birth a savior. God has shown strength with God's arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. God has filled the hungry with good things and the rich God sent away empty. This past year has been a sort of unwelcome epiphany as our nations and the world's shadow sides have been exposed in acts of inhumanity and desperation and ugliness. 
I went to Bosnia twice in the 1990s, and I tried to understand the tragedy and the atrocities that happened in a war where neighbors and families fought with and killed each other. I read an interview with some Muslims who said that before the war they weren't religious, but because they were being murdered as Muslims, they were going to practice their faith. They were going to live as Muslims. Owning their religious identity and practicing their faith was an epiphany for them. Hasn't something similar happened to us this past year? Haven't we observed human life being devalued and people's dignity and rights being discarded? And haven't we, the church, from Pope Francis to the late author and theologian Rachel Hald Evans, haven't we had an epiphany that traditional values are not Christ-like values? Haven't we awakened to the prophetic prayers of the Psalms? This morning's psalm says, Your anointed will rescue the poor when they cry out and the oppressed, when there is no one to help them. Your chosen one will take pity on the lowly and the poor and save their lives. Your chosen one will rescue them from all violence and oppression and will treat their blood as precious. Haven't we awakened to God's truth that all lives are precious? Haven't we realized that Christmas is an invitation from Christ to usher in his realm of righteousness and justice? Haven't we all come to see that our lives are held by God? And isn't this some kind of New Year's idealism? Of course it is. But some of the pain and disappointment of this last year can be used as compost to nurture the seedlings of our faith and God's dreams. The Psalms are full of idealism. In this new worship series, God is Holding Your Life, each week we'll look at a psalm that reminds us that God is holding our lives, all of our lives, all of creation. The image for the series is cupped hands, and throughout the next six weeks, you'll see pictures of cupped hands. Email a picture of your hands cupped when empty or full of something to the church office, office at napamethodist.org, and then look for your hands to be shown in worship. Our cupped hands remind us that God is holding our lives. We'll also hear testimonies from people in the congregation about how they experience being held by God. We'll spend the next six weeks looking for signs and reminders that God is holding our lives. If that's our personal experience of being held and loved by God, it'll be reflected in our communal life and in the ways we live in the world. It can be an epiphany for us to see God at work in us and in the world and despite the damning evidence that the world is a mess of broken and shattered eggs, to experience instead our lives as beautiful and holy and whole and held by God. May this be an epiphany, and may it change us. God is holding our lives. Amen. <music> Children of each color, children of each race, all of them are touched by God's love and There's 
repeated word Shela. Scholars are not sure exactly what it means, but have guessed that the word indicates a pause or an invitation for a musical instrument to be played. Today we'll, we, we will use an instrumental sound to remind us to pause, take a breath, and remember that we are held in the hands of the divine. We will hear the sound and then have some silence. Feel free to close your eyes if you like, Imagine yourself held in safety and love and care. When you hear the sound again, open your eyes. I invite you to cup your hands, ready to receive God's love and peace and to prepare to be God's love and peace in this world. Let us pray for the leaders of this world and the church community. God of justice, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who live in conflict around the world. Prince of peace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are experiencing loss of any kind in this pandemic. Comforting healer, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are homeless, hungry, and alone. Emmanuel, God with us, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who live in comfort, for Christ-like hospitality and generosity. Transforming spirit, hear our prayer. Holy and living one, for those we have named and the ones whose names we do not know, hear our prayer. Will you make a gesture of extending your cupped hands toward others who may be with you or near you as a sign of offering the peace of Christ, the peace that Christ gives us? If you are alone, place your cupped hands over your heart as a sign that you send your heartfelt peace out to the world as we listen to the song, Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, oh, Lord, be
Mary Lee, it's good to see you. Hi, Keith. It's good to see you, too. I'm really glad that we can share communion together, even though we're not in the same place. And we're inviting everyone who is participating in worship today, even though we're not in the same space, to be together in the spirit and to share this holy meal together. It is wonderful. Well, let's begin with our liturgy. Holy and living one, as we gather to break bread once again, break us open to your love, to your peace, to your presence, to your transformative power. In the name of the one who invites us time and again, Jesus the Christ. We are all invited to the gift of this table of grace. As a response to the invitation, we are asked to let go of all that separates us from accepting this grace. We confess the ways that we have placed hardship in the hands of others rather than peace. When we place peace in each other's hands, we place love in all the hands of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Will you make a gesture of extending your cup hands towards others who may be with you as a sign of offering the peace of Christ gives? If you are alone, place your cup hands over your heart as a sign that you send your heartfelt peace out to the world. The Lord be with you. Now, as we celebrate this holy meal and at all times and all places, open your hearts, your mouths and your lives to the Holy One. Let us give our greatest thanks in the company of the beloved gift of life, creator of all that is, you have breathed life into us, filled our emptiness, loved us through our resistance. Time and again you say, listen. Time and again you say, live. Time and again you say, love. And so we gather and give thanks in this moment. We stop so we may listen. We breathe so we may live. We open so we may love. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, Lord, and blessed is your work in Jesus, peace giver life healer, spirit anointer. Do your work in us as in him. May we proclaim release, recovery, liberty, and the end of all that is oppression. May we savor the taste of goodness and offer this gift of love to all. Jesus gathered with his disciples, his friends, his family. He took bread gave thanks over it, and gave it to his companions, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you, for love of you. So whenever you gather together, stop. Sila, think of me, be at peace, I am here. After supper, Jesus lifted his cup, gave thanks over it, and offered it to his companions, saying, Drink from this cup, all of you, this is my life, my love poured out for you. Whenever you gather together, stop. Sila, think of me. Be at peace. I am here. And so, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy Spirit, breathe breath of wind. Fill us. Transform us. Holy Spirit, lover of justice. Fill us. Transform us. Holy Spirit, maker of unity. Fill us. Transform us. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. 
we who are many are one body, one loaf, rising in spirit together. Even if we cannot be physically in this same space, we are one in love. We are one in the grace of Christ broken open for us. While we have many cups, God's love is poured upon us from the one cup of salvation. It is in this sharing beyond all time and space that we are drawn close, we are made whole, that we are made free. As we eat this bread, and drink this cup, We are connected to each other and to Christ. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. and belated Happy New Year. How we think of worship is constantly evolving. Last year, our community had to almost completely rethink how we do corporate worship. And we reflect on that question as each week goes by. You may have noticed that during Advent, our invitation for tithes and offerings had been consolidated together with our reflections on spiritual practices. And we made that change because tithing or making a financial contribution to our church's communal funds is an exercise in several spiritual practices. The most important, if not one of the most important, is the invitation to reflect upon our values and priorities. At the end of the day, all of us are trying to figure out what it takes to thrive, what it takes to live a good life, or to live life well. And quite frankly, it takes a lot. It requires well-funded schools for our kids, the availability of jobs that pay a livable wage, food systems that sustain both us and our environment, safe housing in neighborhoods, adequate health care, and perhaps most importantly, 
organizations and institutions that help us develop human connections, like churches, the scouts, bowling leagues, and so on. All of these things work together, and it's we regular everyday people who must work to keep these things from falling apart. Because who else will do it? Jesus showed us that we human beings have been gifted by God with the power to do so. Going forward as part of our worship, we'll take some time to reflect on that big question. What does it take for us to thrive? If we were to reflect on 2020, thriving perhaps is not the first word that comes to mind. And many of us would probably like to forget that it ever happened. But National Public Radio brought a beautiful short film to my attention. In this film called For the Sake of Old Times, local black community members in Alabama perform Old Lang Syne, while archival footage of the year flashes before your eyes. Images of vigils, racial justice protests, black communities risking their lives to vote fill the screen. Instead of banishing memories of the last year, I invite you to watch this short film. The link will be available in this video's description. And let this film and our worship video guide your reflections during this week. Too many tragedies and triumphs have passed this last year for us to walk away from it without having learned anything. And for those of you who can help fund our work of helping our community, local and global, thrive, please send your offering by mail to this address. Or visit our website to give online. Thank you for worshiping with us today, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Michael here to bring weekly worship video number 43 to a close. And thank you for choosing to spend some time with us today in this virtual community that emanates from the Napa Methodist Church. We are all companions on a spiritual journey. You know that the root of the word companion refers to a person with whom we break bread. And I think that's quite a suitable idea for this Communion Sunday coming together to gain strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. It is still Christmastide, the 12 days of Christmas, and it ends on this next Wednesday, the day of Epiphany, which is sometimes called Three Kings Day. We'll be putting the tree away and the decoration soon, and our three kings and their companions will go back into the box out in the garage. I'll miss seeing them every day, Maybe we can keep a few of them on display all year. I am sorry that the last word segment was missing from last week's video. I guess the best explanation is that it just got lost in the electronic woods. It was out there somewhere, but we just couldn't track it down. That left you on your own for a week regarding Michael's mantra. I had a thought about the pandemic after experiencing our Advent worship theme, I believe... You know, I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. Well, I believe in the coronavirus even if I'm not suffering. We need to behave as though we believe, that we know that our actions are important towards slowing down the spread of this very active virus. There's so much contradictory advice out there. Well, we are also advised to do no harm. And I don't think there's any harm in Wash your hands, keep your distance, be patient, and mask up in public. This vaccine is good, and that's for tomorrow. This is for today. In this new series, we're exploring ways in which God is holding our life. We were reminded in the reading of the psalm today that a just society is one that proclaims these lives are precious, 
and worthy of protection. God is holding our lives. So hear these words of benediction. Go now in the knowledge that God is holding your life even as we hold each other. You are not alone. You are loved. Now go in peace and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen to that. But wait, of course, there is a postlude. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. Let's listen to Matt. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. And they say that his name is Jesus. He come, down. He come from the glory. He come down. He come from the glorious kingdom. He come down. He come from the glory. He come down. He come from the glorious kingdom. Oh, oh yes, believer. Oh, oh yes, believer. Oh, oh yes, believer. He come from the glorious kingdom. The angels sang when the baby was born. The angels sang when the baby was born. The angels sang when the baby was born. And they say that his name is Jesus. He come down. He come from the glory. He come down. He come from the glorious kingdom. He come down. He come from the glory, he come down. He come from the glorious kingdom. Oh, oh yes, believer. Oh, oh yes, believer. Oh, oh yes, believer. He come from the glorious kingdom. The wise men came where the baby was born. The wise men came where the baby was born. The wise men came where the baby was born. And they say that his name is Jesus. He come, down. He come from the glory. He come down. He come from the glorious kingdom. He come down. He come from the glory, he come down. He come from the glorious kingdom. Oh, oh yes, believer. Oh, oh yes, believer. Oh, oh yes, believer. He come from the glorious kingdom.